Okay, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, our uh, uh, Julia based open source package. It's called uh, Molkit from our startup Molkit for quantum simulation and also quantum computing assisted by machine learning uh, and AI. And uh, together, uh, me, Taha Salim, and my co founder, Alan Chancey, we are uh, going to uh, present that. Uh, feel free to check those links for more information. A bit of uh, ourselves. Um, uh, uh, co-founder of Molkit, and also I work on a part-time basis as a quantum education officer in Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, and about to finish a PhD in uh, computational chemistry. So my name is Alain Chancé from France. Uh, I'm co-founder of Molkit. Um, I am also a co-author of a book, uh, Quantum Chemistry and Computing for the Curious, illustrated with Python and Qiskit code. I'm also a Qiskit advocate. For more details, please uh, pick, have, a, have a look at my LinkedIn profile. Thank you. Okay, so um, here I'm highlighting quickly the features in our package. So uh, we have two things. Uh, we have uh, efficient quantum circuit simulator that's uh, Julia based. Uh, that's to help in c performing chemistry simulations. So we have developed our own quantum simulator and uh, you can freely construct the quantum circuits and building your own quantum uh, algorithms. These algorithms are required uh, to uh, be running on a quantum uh, computer. There are several libraries are uh, uh, built in, so they could be used freely. And uh, of course, uh, that package is easy to interface with Qiskit. So in the case that you want to run it on an actual quantum hardware, uh, th that's easy uh, to be interfaced. Uh, on the right, we see a few sc screenshots of the code and uh, the kind of simulation and uh, how it, it is in operating gates uh, and so on. And the second part is a quantum molecular simulation. So that's the main purpose of the package because we develop uh, uh, also a quantum dynamics uh, simulator. We have built-in constructors for molecular Hamiltonians. Any, any molecular system, it has to uh, be described as a Hamiltonian. And those Hamiltonians are quite uh, complicated and uh, computationally intensive. Uh, uh, for example, uh, rotational vibration Hamiltonian of diatomic and triatomic molecules. We need very huge matrices uh, for uh, to, to, to solve and to get the properties of these that are encoded in what we call wave functions. And uh, we, we see here an example of these wave functions uh, here and of course the kind of matrix elements you get. But because of this complexity, we thought about making generic scheme using machine learning and the AI where uh, you can uh, deduce and compute those wave functions uh, on, uh, on the fly. So this is the um, uh, artificial intelligence part. Uh, uh, of course, we uh, leverage the uh, packages, uh, uh, surrogates.gl, um, which uh, lies on top of Flux. Uh, and um, uh, we uh, very easily, in, in about a week, developed a, a proof of value that we could uh, uh, train a, a neural network surrogate function to um, very closely uh, reproduce the uh, wave functions uh, for a, a number of different uh, use cases, uh, different states, uh, and, and different uh, values of frequency. Uh, on these um, uh, screenshots, you can see uh, different uh, uh, values of the states, so the, the, the different number of crests. And on the right-hand side, uh, you, you, you can have a, a look at the uh, actual code, which is actually uh, fairly compact. And of course, this, this is made available on the Molket Git, GitHub site, and you can reproduce the experiments. So, um, so this, is, this is in progress. Uh, we have demonstrated on a, like a toy model uh, the, uh, that it works uh, fine. Um, and uh, this is only the beginning. We intend to uh, um, gradually um, demonstrate the uh, efficiency of uh, 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 providing surrogate functions for these uh, wave functions. That's it. Thank you. And uh, as Alain highlighted, uh, this is a quick demo. Uh, so feel free to reach out to us for more uh, extensive uh, demos. That's just a quick look how we generate those wave functions. Uh, we have many more libraries, but of course, it's still work in progress. So we are keep uh, continuing, uh, continuously developing it. 
So feel free to, to reach us, uh, uh, to reach out to us. And of course, you can reach us on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and also you can check uh, our GitHub uh, repo, but also website if you'd like to try it on uh, Jupyter Hub itself. So yeah, by this, yeah, that's uh, our presentation. So waiting for questions. Um, so, uh, molecular quantum dynamics, it's an age-old problem in theoretical chemistry, um, right? So, is your software compatible with the state of the art, or, I mean, uh, competitive with the state of the art of what quantum chemists have been doing? Uh, so, you, by state of the, of the art, uh, do you mean to include the state of, of the art methods, or uh, the computational part where it's more efficient and more optimized? Uh, yeah, from the computation side, or, I mean... Um, I guess you're trying to solve this on a quantum computer, um, but of course, classical computation um, of quantum molecular dynamics. Um, MCTDH, for example, uh, has been um, really successful there. Is what you're doing competitive on that level now, or is it going to be competitive in the future when you have quantum computers now? Uh, so thanks for the question. That's very interesting. So uh, regarding uh, uh, MCDH is like multi hull three uh, uh, configuration uh, methods. So what we uh, what we do? We have two parts. We have the quantum computing part. So we have our own simulator to to check. So we have to do certain uh, of mapping the classical problem on a quantum computer. So this is for proof of concept use cases. And together with that, we have our classical code that we try the machine learning and the AI with it. And in the future, in the pipeline, we would like to integrate both to see which uh, part could be benefit from the quantum part and from uh, machine learning. And the MCDH is very good candidate because of this basic set that they have. So it's very good candidate for machine learning. Anything with kernel, that will be perfect to compute uh, spectra and the transitions and all of that. So that's uh, definitely indeed uh, in, in our scope. So feel free, we can talk after the presentation and uh, about this uh, further. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we probably have time for one more question. If anybody has anything else they'd like to ask the speakers. Also, in the meantime, for those of you standing, there's lots of seats on this side of the room. I want to I know, in terms of efficiency, is there any difference between the classical molecular dynamics and quantum molecular dynamics for, for example, for, for numerical efficiency, for parallelization, or scalability? So uh, thanks for the question. I would like to highlight that quantum molecular dynamics by itself is something separate from quantum computing. So it is uh, mainly you use uh, classical quantum dynamics with uh, the nuclear motion, and then you combine this together, and you have quantum molecular dynamics, which is sort of quantum methods to describe uh, molecular motion and chemical interactions, uh, and the chemical actions as well. So, but performing quantum molecular dynamics on a quantum computer, that's a, a separate thing. So, so far, there is uh, no efficiency because it's, the quantum computing is still in, in its infancy, it's still work in progress. Uh, so we are working on use cases in that. But together, in parallel, we're also working on a classical uh, libraries that can use the machine learning and the AI in optimizing uh, those things, and until we find the sweetest spot where uh, they could be merged together. <laughs>